I want to welcome everyone for the next in our series of Why Emerge. And this is a series with our incredible Emerge Kentucky alumna who are from across the state. My name is Gretchen Hunt, and I have the privilege and honor of being the executive director of Emerge Kentucky. For those of you who are new to Emerge Kentucky, we are the premier candidate training program for Democratic women in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And our goal is to increase the number of women from diverse backgrounds across this beautiful state who serve in office. And so we have a rich history. We've been in place for 11 years. We have over 250 women who we count as alumna across the state. We have 34 women on the ballot coming up this November. And so it is a really exciting time in Kentucky politics. And I'm just so thrilled to uh, host our next alumna to speak with you all today more about the program and why Kentucky um, why in Kentucky politics Emerge Kentucky has made such a big impact in her life and the lives of other women she knows. So um, Rita, welcome to the program. Um, Rita Smart is a former state representative in the Kentucky House, and we are just so pleased to have you here today. Thank you, Gretchen. My privilege. You're welcome. So um, Rita, before we start and talk more about your political career, um, give us a little bit of a sense of, of your origins. Um, what inspired you early on to have a leadership role and serve in your community? So tell us a little bit about your background. And please let us know where you're calling from, because of course, we're in the virtual world. I'm in Louisville. Megan with Emerge Kentucky is here in Louisville, but you are across the state. So tell us where you're where you are right now. Well, I am in Richmond, Kentucky, and uh, that's about 25 miles south of um, Lexington. I am in historic Bennett House, which is an 1890 uh, historic home. It was the home of uh, James and Sarah Clay Bennett. And uh, 20 years ago, my husband and I purchased this property and we have done bed and breakfast here. So we're in transition right now. The property's for sale and we're moving closer to our grandchildren. But um, years ago, I uh, grew up on a farm in Nicholas County and I uh, was a very shy little girl. I came to Richmond to attend college at Eastern Kentucky University. And I worked for the Cooperative Extension Service at UK here in Madison County for 32 years. And during my uh, time as an extension agent, I remember giving young people uh, the book, Oh, the Places You Will Go. And I say that today because you never know the places you will go and the things that you will do. As an extension agent, one of my responsibilities was to write a weekly column in the local newspaper. And they had my picture there. So uh, you can imagine over those many years, the number of people that I became acquainted to and I would even be in the grocery store and people would talk to me because they felt like they knew me through my picture. But after my tenure as an extension agent, I had, uh, uh, had training in historical downtown uh, and the Main Street program. So I did some consulting for the city of Richmond after my retirement on the, the Main Street program through the, the state. And one day I came out of City Hall and I had a, 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 what I thought was a wonderful idea. And the city manager and the mayor just sort of, you know, shook their head. Oh, that's good. But I had the feeling they would not go along with my idea. So I remember I stepped out of City Hall and I looked toward the courthouse and I thought, I'm going to run for city commissioner. And on a whim, I went down to the courthouse and signed up. And then as I was walking home, I thought, oh, I'm going to be so embarrassed if I don't get very many votes. But when I campaigned that year, many of the people would say to me, oh, Miss Smart, I remember you. You used to write for the paper. So I served to, uh, one term two years as a Richmond City Commissioner. And then one day I was going into the Y and I got a phone call from our state representative. And he asked me if I would be interested in running for the state house. He was planning on retiring. 
And you can imagine the feeling that I had. I was like, oh my goodness, I wouldn't know how to do that. But the more I thought about it, and he talked about the uh, things that he was interested in, that I was interested in, issues around families, education, uh, good jobs. So I decided that I might do that. So uh, when I went down to sign my papers, I was met by uh, uh, some of the women there in the state house. And I remember they said, oh, you should sign up for a merge. And I had no idea what a merge was, but a merge was new in Kentucky at that time. That was the first year they were gonna have it. And so luckily I was able to get into that first class. And not only was I a member of that class, but I was running for office. So you can imagine trying to learn about things, how to run a campaign and run a campaign uh, at the same time. But I say the success of winning that campaign, I owe to a merge because they taught me things that I needed right then, hands on. And um, I won, I won that race and was able to serve three terms serving District 81 here in Richmond and Berea. And your story is um, not at all unique. You know, a lot of the women that we talk to, you know, I've been on the phone with women over the past several weeks, whether they're women living in rural areas, women in urban areas, women who don't necessarily have a background in politics, but they have felt like, gosh, I'm looking around me at the leaders and I can certainly do it just as well. Um, sometimes women do not step into that power, but I'm so glad that you walk towards that city hall that day because some women don't always listen to that calling. So tell me more about what gave you that confidence to walk into city hall and put your name on a ballot. What, what do you think are the, are the strengths that, um, that we can call upon as women to really take those brave steps? Well, in my job as an extension agent, it was a lot of uh, leadership development, teaching women to um, take on leadership roles and teaching them uh, as members of homemaker clubs, extension homemaker clubs, to assume uh, leadership and officers in the club and then go on to the next state uh, step in the area and the and in the state, but I think women are really uh, there. Our intuition explains to us and pushes us to work for those issues that really affect families and communities. And um, I guess the reason that I turned to walk toward the courthouse was I was now a business owner on Main Street, and I knew what was needed to make the business successful. But I realized that we had to have leaders in city government that would cooperate and that would push for uh, small business owners. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your individual needs and your family needs, I think that's what gives you the confidence. Just like right now when we're voting, we should be voting about for people that would help our families and the needs that our, our individual families and communities need so that we could, could reach the level of success that we want. So at that particular time, I, it, was, it, was a, it was personal. It was because I was a business owner and um, it was important to me that we had the Main Street program and that we uh, had uh, good leadership there. So that's, that's what pushed me there. And so I would say to any woman, you know, just look around you, what needs to happen? What are some things that need, that really need to, to happen to make your community or your home or your family or your life better? And then if those needs are not being met, then step up to the plate because you can get it done. Now, okay. oh, go ahead. another thing that gave me confidence was when I first ran for office, I, I really didn't have a background in political science. And I had been a federal employee and because of the Hatch Act, during my tenure as an extension agent, I really wasn't involved. I always voted, but I didn't really uh, get involved in campaigns. So, uh, but I had heard this word, uh, a kitchen cabinet. 
and I think it was President Roosevelt that had his kitchen cabinet. And those were local people, his friends that would advise him. And so I established a kitchen cabinet and I tried to make it diverse, educators, mothers, business owners, uh, senior citizens, and they would come and we would just sit around the dining room table and talk about issues. And then, then from that, we progressed out and brought in other people. And then those were my worker bees. Those were the people that helped me. And they had the same ideas. They had the same needs and interest in our city and our community. And so reaching out to other people and, let, and listening to them and letting them tell you what they think is important will help you gain that confidence. And that's a great skill. We do definitely train and emerge about those components, building your kitchen cabinet, you know, over that six month period, you learn a lot of those concrete skills of how to do door knocking, how to come up with a plan to identify your voters, how to do the fundraising components, you know, all those things that may be very new to folks, but there's also the network um, part of it. And you were a part of that first class. Tell, tell me about some of the women in your, in that class that you still are connected with. Cause there were some heavy hitters in that first class for sure. Well, um, we had a wonderful time. I think I was probably the oldest member of, of that class. And, um, it was, we just sort of bonded all at once. You know, we would help each other, uh, we were all uh, a little bit scared when we first started and we kind of giggled, you know, because you could tell that nervous giggling and all. But um, I remember one, uh, Kathy Plumman, who is now a, a city council member in Lexington. She and I sort of bonded right there at the beginning. And uh, she had, I had known her through the United Way. She had been involved with that. And so... Um, we sort of paired up and whenever each month we would, uh, whatever the assignment was, seems like I would gravitate toward her and she would gravitate toward me. Um, we did have that network and, and you know, we still call on each other when we need things. But when you talk about a network, one of the things that happened to me after I won my election, the National Emerge group that started in California had um, their annual meeting and they invited me to come to San Francisco to an accept an award, uh, the Rising Star Award that was for eMERGE graduates that were successful in their campaigns. And when I got there and walked into that ballroom and saw all those many, many women that had worked together to uh, raise funds, to, uh, try to get women to join and, and run for office. You know, it was just amazing to me and a whole new world just opened up for me, not only to get to travel to see a, a wonderful city, but to meet all of those women and, and see how dedicated they were and then bring that idea back to Kentucky. And our Emerge here just started and just flourished and grew and grew and grew. So you do reach a lot of women uh, after that first year that I won and then the, the next two campaigns, the Emerge Women right there to work and help me, not only monetary, but to walk and to send out postcards and to uh, get their friends and neighbors. So it's, it's sort of like a, 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 just a, a collective group of people that you'll always remember. Absolutely. And that network keeps growing. You know, when we started, it was just 10, 25, 30, 40, 50 women. And now we're up to 250. We have women who have been trained, you know, from across the state, from Pikeville to Paducah. Um, our class is 29% our alumni are women of color. We have women who have broken barriers in all their offices. Um, we have increased, you know, since you served in the house, we have gone up in the number of women serving and the number of them are emerge women. Um, I know even several years back we were 40 
third or 46th in the nation. Now we're 39th. So we'd like to get up there to be in the top 10, not the bottom, um, but we're proud of those statistics. What do you think um, your vision is for Emerge going forward in terms of what, what Kentucky needs? You know, why do we need women to lead this state forward? Well, I always laughed when I was in Frankfurt because the men used examples of sports. You know, it was always, uh, there was no I in team and they would tell about playing their sports. But the women always used practical. Uh, the men would say, you have to learn the basics, you know, to play in sports. And the women would say, you have to start with the basics to succeed in life. And then we would talk about things like pre-K, um, child care, uh, nutrition, health issues. And those were the things that always seemed to get on the back burner. So the more women we have, the more basics we can cover. We can cover those basic needs for our state. We still are so high in the number of people that have diseases and we are always ranking up there in the number of uh, cancer patients and uh, the number of children that are not uh, have enough food to eat. You know, all of our communities now have food banks where people donate food because the children are afraid when they go home on the weekends that they won't have food to eat and they have their backpacks. And now with the coronavirus, we worry every day that they'll have food. And thank goodness the schools have been able to step up in some ways to help families. And then we have so much domestic violence uh, for our families and our children. So these were the things, the basic things in family life that if we don't correct at the beginning, then we continue to have those problems all the way down and it keeps our state at a, at a lower level. So women know about that. And um, the more women that I see on the state level and even in the local levels that work toward those basic things of helping individuals and families, then it helps to have pull our, our state up out of some of those problems. Thank you so much for that. And what you're pointing to is what some people talk about is those, you know, family-based or gender-based policies, but we're seeing in the midst of a pandemic and trying to get our economy back um, on track that these benefit men. You know, if there's not childcare and universal pre-K, men can't go back to work. Women can't go back to work. We're seeing that imp impact very, um, very acutely right now and certainly harder for marginalized women, women in groups that are harder hit, you know, Black women and Black Kentuckians who are hit by healthcare issues and, and some of the needs you've talked about in the health um, because of health disparities. So one, one thing too that I think is really important about the, the arc of your career is that you've bounced back. So you, you were part of that wave in 2016 when Trump came in where we lost some really um, powerful seats in the house and, and it hit a number of women very hard in politics. Um, but then like what happens even after a hurricane is you have resiliency, you have bounce back um, and women came back. So what did you learn from that hard lesson and fall and how did you bounce back? Because that issue of resiliency is something that we see in a lot of our merge women who run once, you know, may not may not win that first time, but bounce back. So what, what did you learn there? And what, what lessons would you share with other women who, who are looking at bouncing back, running again or getting back up again? What would you, what would you, what wisdom would you share with them? Well, um, because of my age, when I, you know, I'm retired and I'm a, a grandmother, I have five grandchildren now. So after I lost that race, I decided that it was time for me just to focus on my family because uh, running for office and being a public service takes a lot of, of your time away from family and uh, your home life and all. So um, for about a year, I, and we were selling our business, but then um, it wasn't long till I realized, uh, you know, hey, we need this, hey, we need that. So uh, I uh, 
talked to our, our mayor and uh, he asked me to, to be on the parks board. And a lot of times when you run for office, you start at levels like that as committee on committees or on boards. And that, that helps you give, get a feel of, of the, the landscape and what's going on. So I went back, back down to that level and sir, I'm serving on the Richmond City Parks Board. And we've made a lot of headway. We just uh, have a new playground and it's all inclusive. You know, it's for children that are handicapped or have problems. And uh, it's of the newest, finest material. So working at that level, and then as um, I try to help, help emerge and help emerge women, being a mentor to some of them and just talking and encouraging and doing things like we're doing today. And most recently, I've, I've jumped on board to help the Amy McGrath campaign. And uh, a lot of the uh, staff people there are younger. And so I can, can work with them on things that I've learned in run, running com campaigns and how to do things and making calls and encouraging people. And just using the skills that I learned in Emerge and through uh, other endeavors to just jump back in. I don't think you can ever, you never stop learning. Um, one of the things that was just starting big when I lost my last uh, election was social media. You know, when I first started, you walked door to door, you knocked on doors, uh, you had big rallies and that type of thing. And then when social media came along, that was the way you got your message out. And they use that a lot more now. I am a, not completely computer uh, illiterate, but uh, almost, <laughs> I, I still have these skills that I know how to use, but I'm, I'm a little bit afraid, I'm afraid I'll make a mistake. And so I, I call on my grandchildren to teach me that part. But uh, an ever-changing way of doing things and jumping, just jumping back in with the pandemic now, you know, we can't have big crowds. And we can't knock on doors, so we have to learn different ways of doing things. So just being attuned to the times, because every every year is going to be different. Something's going to change, but uh, just get back in there, learn how to do it, and in and the end, it's almost all the same. Absolutely, I think that's a good place to to wrap us up that um, that every year is different, that you learn new skills. Um, we are so appreciative that you continue to um, mentor and support Emerge Women and, um, you know, for our networks that know, you you now know an Emerge alumna that you can reach out to um, for more for more feedback on, on how you can run. And, and in particular to our women who are running in more rural or smaller town areas too, because I think, um, there are definitely different dynamics in a smaller town than in a city or in a different area that, that are unique and that really deserve their own attention. So we really thank you for hopping on today. Um, I do want to remind our audience that we've talked a little bit about Emerge Kentucky. It is a six-month training program. It starts in January and goes through June, and we are accepting applicants right now. So now is the time, if you have listened to Rita and listened to some of the other alums who have come on this program, and you are similarly inspired to take that action, to look at, as Rita has said, what needs to be done in your area. Um, you may be the one to do it. You are the one to do it. So check out those applications on our website. They are due on November 7th. And if you're listening and tuning in and you're thinking, I know, a future state legislator, city commissioner, mayor, attorney general, and I want to nominate that woman, you can also recommend a woman to apply for our program. So we really want to point you to that website. Uh, there are other ways you can become involved and support getting more Democratic women elected to office in Kentucky. So one of the ways you can do that is to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and it really does help get the word out. Rita talked about that when she went to the Capitol, women said, you really need to do Emerge, and she didn't know about it yet. And there are still women across the state who may not know yet about Emerge, and we need to keep getting the word out. And the third thing you can do is help support women across the state 
in getting the training they need to be strong candidates. You know, in this most recent election in June, which is the primary, I always have to get, get my dates right because I want to say the spring, but it was June in this pandemic year, we had an 86% win rate in the primaries. And many of our candidates went unopposed because they are strong eMERGE women who've gotten the training on campaigning, on fundraising, and they didn't even have an opponent who wanted to challenge them. So we have a strong record. But to do that, to keep recruiting and training that group of candidates and then providing them the support as alums when they do run and getting that ongoing education, we need your support. So if you are able to, any amount, become a monthly sustainer, that is a valuable way that you can contribute to having more women focus on those core issues and move Kentucky forward. Um, so Rita, on behalf of Merge Kentucky, I wanna thank you for joining us today. I know you are very busy and we'll get back to campaigning. So we appreciate your time and we appreciate everyone who's tuned in today. And please reach out to us in the future if you have any questions. Thanks again.